And now from Louisville with likely a very different take on all this is Bob Baffert. Uh, Bob, I'll put it just simply. State your case and what is your plan? Well, first of all, the uh, the uh, medication uh, betamethasone that was found in the post-trace test, which actually is a legal therapeutic medication, was never administered to the horse uh, since I've had them. So that that's the troubling part that we're trying to figure out, and we're going through the we're going to have to really go through step by step the process and figure out how the horse got contaminated, because that's an issue that we've been dealing with in racing lately. Just to be clear, you just said the horse has never had it. It's not like you gave him some and, and, it, and he didn't pass it soon enough to be legal. You're saying the horse has never been uh, injected with that. No, he's never, he's never, he's never had that, that uh, at, ever, you know? And so that's, that's a troubling thing that, you know, that we're just really, this has been horrible uh, for the horse. He's just a, He's, he ran his heart out, and I just hate seeing this for him to, to go through this, and it's just tough. I asked at the top, what is your plan? Because we're less than a week away from the running of the Preakness. You, you have two horses going in that. Are you going to try to get an expedited test? Otherwise, there'd be a cloud hanging over your horse if he's allowed to run in Maryland. No, I mean, the horse was fine. He actually had an out-of-competition test before he ran in the Derby, and that was fine. So that's why... Um, this is all troubling to us, but uh, I'm, I'm running two horses in the Preakness, and when we get them there, I ought to, I want to have them tested there just in case before, but uh, they're, but they're vanning there tomorrow. Churchill Downs suspended you from running any uh, horses at Churchill Downs while this is being investigated. Have you gotten any indication from the Maryland racing officials that they're considering anything like that uh, as some tracks uh, make recommendations like on a companion level to another track around the country? I was pretty surprised, Kenny, by what Churchill did today. Um, that was um, quite like, you know, no due process or whatever. We still live in America. So, you know, I, they know I, I usually, you know, I haven't really dealt with that yet. And we were getting ready to leave anyway. But uh, it's one of those things where I don't know what's going to happen. If Pim, I, haven't, I haven't heard anything yet. So uh, I know the horses will be on their way tomorrow. Uh, just to be clear, you, you're suggesting your horse has never been touched with this drug, yet somehow uh, you're being told that he tested positive for microscopic level of it. Uh, how in the world could this have happened? Well, when you're dealing in picograms, that's that's the thing that America doesn't know about picograms is one billionth of a, it's like a one grain of salt in an Olympic-sized pool. And that's what we're talking about here. And he had 21. So when you're when you're dealing with those kind of levels, it's that's it's, that's contaminant level they call it, and that's what happened in my prior cases, and we resolved them all. But that's that's what's going on. It happened to Justify. It happened to in in Arkansas, and now it's happened here, and it's and it happened on the biggest day on the biggest race. It's just it's just horrible. Bob Baffert, thanks for joining us on uh, what is the most chaotic week leading to the running of the Preakness Stakes. Hey, thanks for having me, Kenny. Only once in the 147-year history of the Kentucky Derby has a winner on the track been taken down after the fact for a medical violation. That was way back in 1968 with Dancer's Image. And that doesn't even scratch the surface of all else that was potentially involved that year, but that's for a book. Uh, right now, we have Jay Pribman, national correspondent for the Daily Racing Forum. Jay, needless to say, this is not the type of publicity that uh, horse racing was looking for leading to the Preakness. You're a writer. You're probably already written your story for the Racing Forum. What are the keys to the way you're looking at this case? Well, obviously, it's a huge deal, Kenny. I mean, we're talking about a horse who won the Kentucky Derby and, according to his trainer, has tested positive for uh, a medication violation. There, there still hasn't been any word yet from the Kentucky Racing Commission. Usually in situations like this, uh, there's a split sample and that is sent out, and once that split sample comes back, if it confirms the original uh, findings, then a violation is called and they go forth with whatever penalty there would be for the horse uh, or the trainer. All we know is that the first test has come back positive and there's still you know, a few miles uh, to travel on this adventure. So, so this is already being done sort of out of normal context. We shouldn't even know about this yet is what you're saying, that the second test when they, when they sort of appeal and run it on a split sample, that should have happened before we got to this point? 
usually what happens if it's the first race on Friday at Santa Anita and something like this had happened, that would be the protocol. And you'd find out about it a few weeks after it happened, once the confirmation comes out. I think what happened in this case is that there were obviously rumbles on Saturday night and Bob Baffert and his team elected on Sunday morning to try and get out ahead of the news and to disclose what they knew to this point. Baffert loses it, let's say. We're, this is all hypothetical. Mandaloon then is the winner. Mandaloon's not running in the Preakness, so there we have no Triple Crown winner, though. In this case, is that even that big a deal? I mean, just how difficult a week is this for racing when you add it all up and, and just the way the whole thing has been handled? Well, it's going to be a very challenging week regardless of what happens. I mean, whether these horses run, this is obviously a huge story because you're talking about a horse who has had a medication violation in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, but there's also the perspective of Baffert has had a number of issues like this in the past. But if you look at what kind of medication it is, it's something that's legal for horses to have, just not to be able to have it in them on race day. It's a corticosteroid, and corticosteroids are, are used for inflammation. And as you were saying, Kenny, it's something that trainers can use. Uh, they just have to make sure that it's out of the horse's system well in advance of race day. Whether it was a lot or a very, very minute amount, uh, there couldn't be any. This is all you know, pr based on what has been revealed so far by Bob Baffert. The Kentucky Racing Commission has yet to officially say anything about it, and I'm sure they would not until the second test comes back. Jay Pribben for the Daily Racing Forum on what is going to be a long week leading to the running of the Preakness. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.